On this week's episode, we're building a portable heater. Sponsored by TRE 4x4BC. All right, welcome back to Fab and Adventures, guys. This week, we're gonna build ourselves a little portable heater. And probably a lot of you guys have seen these little Chinese diesel-powered heaters that you can get off of Amazon. And they come with like your remote control and a little LCD panel and a fuel tank and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to take this unit, build an aluminum box for it, make it portable so I can put it in my Samurai, use it when we're camping, or hunting or fishing or whatever use it on the jet boat for staying out overnight just everything you know doesn't matter even if it's september and you get up in the mountains and you're camping or you got your wife with you or your girlfriend with you and you're out camping up in the mountains things can get pretty darn cold surprisingly cold and wouldn't it be awesome if you could just reach into the back of your 4x4 or your samurai or your tracker or whatever pull out this little heater hook it up throw some heat in the tent I'll bet you things would go pretty well for you that night. All right, so let's have a look in this box here, see what we got. And I hate unboxing videos, so I'm not gonna go through all this junk real quick. I'm just gonna rip it out, see what we got. All right, look at all the stuff it comes with. Obviously your heater, unit here, all just kind of a self-contained unit. Here's your little LCD panel, little remote control to turn it on and off. and Looks like heat up and down. Fuel pump, fuel line. Uh, I think this must be how you mount the heater to whatever box you have. Looks like a little exhaust pipe, probably an air intake pipe. Your wiring with all your clip-ons. So it looks like it's fairly plug and play. Hose fittings, fuel filter. Uh, not sure. This is your little corrugated probably intake line. This would be probably your exhaust line. Looks like an adjustable blower dealy. Another piece of hose, your hot air out, I imagine. And a big old massive fuel tank. This thing's huge, it's 10 liters. So you get all that stuff for 269 bucks, I think is what I paid for this. And I'm just gonna basically build an aluminum box and go from there. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> now I finally get to use my newest addition to the shop. Pretty excited about it. And I know it's not exactly what it's meant for, but it is a mill drill. So we're gonna drill. Go nice and slow with a big hole saw, lots of power. Should be no powering out like my old little drill bit. Can't wait. Man, that's nice to have the power and to be able to go real slow like that. So she'll fit on there. We got most of the box here done. Now I'm just gonna install some of these rivnuts 
And uh, if you guys don't have one of these tools, you need to get you one because they're super handy for installing a threaded insert into your lid. Okay, so we got the side door done. We got the tank mounted. Let's check the fit. Well, there we go. Looks like the rest of the uh, bolts I'll have to cut down so they don't run into the tank. And then in here was where we're gonna mount that little digital panel and you'll be able to pull your cords out and uh, start her up. So now we gotta cut the holes in the side for the inlet air and the outlet air and make a couple holes in there for the exhaust and the intake air for the burner. All right, we're back at her here today. You can see I got the, the heater unit itself kind of mocked in there. I've got it marked out for the fresh air holes and the hot hole where the hot air is coming out. And now we're gonna start doing the fun stuff. We're gonna install the brains of the unit and that brains of the unit is gonna go right in here. And we gotta drill a hole up top there to put a grommet in. That way all our wiring can go out in to the main body and then we can start mounting the fuel pump inside here the fuel filter the fuel lines and clip everything together put some fuel in her and give her a try so uh let's have at her here All right, we've been at this here for 47 minutes already and I finally figured out that I had a suction problem right in here. Now it's pulling the fuel. We should see fuel coming here. Here it comes. It's probably gonna take a few attempts to pull the fuel down and around here because it, it just pulls fuel for a little bit. And then after so long, when it doesn't see ignition, it shuts down and then kind of cools down or is a delay time, you know, to flush any gases out and then it tries to reignite. Here the pump picking up speed, fuel's coming around, starting to get fuel in the fuel filter. It's going to take a while to fill that sucker before it starts pulling it through the pump and then down into the rest of the system. While we wait for the second ignition I'll show you what we got here. Fuel comes from the fuel tank here, goes through the filter, goes through the pump, and then comes down around here to this empty line here where I'm pumping fuel out. And then it comes down to this open-ended line where I'm pumping fuel. There the fuel pump's going again. And then it goes, plugs right in here. And this is a fresh air intake, and that's your exhaust. So I'm just gonna show you quick how this all works. You basically peel this out, hook it up to a battery, voila, LCD screen comes on, simple as that, and turn the button on with the old remote control. You can also turn it on by hitting the on button there. So it's cycling air right now, it's blowing air through the heater. A glow plugs, looks like the glow plugs are lit. And then once it's up to temperature, it's gonna input the fuel the fuel's gonna come in, it should ignite and then it'll warm up the temperature. And then cool down cycle, when you shut it down, I timed it, it probably takes about six and a half minutes to cool this unit right down to where everything shuts off and it's not using any more power other than the LCD screen anymore. There you go, you can hear the pump. You can hear ignition. It's blowing out just a little bit of smoke when it first starts up. And she's starting to warm up. Now you can hear ramping up in speed. The exhaust coming out of it's fairly warm. The air coming out of the hose here is warming up. And it's been running for about three minutes so far. Then 
and you can set your temperature here. You can also see on the LCD screen that she's about half temperature up there. The burner itself is about half temperature. That's about three quarter temperature. And it's blowing pretty warm already and three minutes. There it's at the full bars there showing she's up to full temperature already. So within three minutes it's up to full operating temperature and it's blowing like nice clean hot air. Four minutes and with the remote control you can turn it down. It says it's at 26 degrees. We'll turn it all the way down to eight minutes or eight degrees and you should hear it ramp down. So I want to figure out how to be able to mount this muffler on here because it does quiet it down considerably and it's blowing like really hot air out of here. There you go you can hear it cooling down now because I've got it set for eight degrees Celsius. So the fan is slowing down and the burner and everything is slowing down so it'll just go to a minimum state this is slow and is cool I guess as it can burn it's six minutes runtime so far that sucker gets hot right away boy when you do that the exhaust is really hot so you'll want to watch where you put this sort of thing and then to shut it off just hit the button and it shuts off on its own so you can see things on here like temperature what temperature it is in the room I believe what temperature you have it set to battery voltage those are any trouble codes you'll have your book there that shows you know E01234 up to 10 or something like that shows any sort of trouble codes and how long the runtime is on it. Nine minutes since we hooked her up to the battery. And there's temperature inside. You know, and it's got, you can also show, you can set it for what time it is and all kinds of other junk, but I'm not gonna worry about that. You can turn your temperature up, temperature down, lowest it goes is eight, high as it goes is 36, I think. And there it is. All right, so project portable diesel heater is pretty well done. I just got to build a handle for this here and some way to keep these cords inside of here. And I think it's been a great little addition to my outdoor equipment. It's going to be awesome for hunting and fishing and camping in cooler weather, doing some overlanding. It's even going to be great for in my tractor for when I'm plowing snow. I have a cab on the tractor, but no heat. So I should be able to hook this bad boy up, pump some heat in a cab and be nice and toasty warm while I'm plowing snow. So if you guys are liking this sort of content, go ahead, subscribe, share, like these videos. Make sure you hit the bell. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Fabin underscore adventures. Stay warm, you guys. We'll see you next Friday.